Hey there, YouTube. Let's talk about politics. Hey there, everybody. So, politics and talking politics is something that I think is going to be kind of difficult. Um, when it comes to politics, there aren't necessarily black and white answers to things. So um, rather than rational statements um, about reality, then most political beliefs and political opinions are based on um, kind of where your morals on particular subjects lie. And there's a lot of ambiguity. It doesn't help that in America, we have polarized every issue into essentially two camps. Now, I want to caveat this video with saying that uh, I am a veteran of the military, and I'm not saying that to try to give any extra validation to my personal opinion or uh, try to say that what I say is right or wrong or anything like that, but to say that I believe myself to be a patriot. So before people hear me criticizing US politics and think that that somehow means that I am not patriotic, uh, I wanna be very clear that my dog tags are hanging right below my camera right now. Uh, I'm very proud of the time that I spent in the military. And I do believe in uh, people's rights to freedom of speech, even if that is to criticize their government. Um, I think that, that these things are, are not arbitrary, and I think that political opinions are one of those things that we tend to form early in life and hold on to because it's so polarized. If we spend a little bit more time educating people and, um, you know, doing a better job of forming opinions rather than just instilling beliefs, then maybe we would be a little bit better off. But more on that. I feel honored to be in a country where I can voice my opinion and address my concerns and grievances on my country and express my opinions with other people and we can have intellectual debates and conversations and see where we both lie. Now, the two-party system in America is flawed, fundamentally. Uh, I don't care whether you call them the Democrats and Republicans or the conservatives and liberals, blue and red, the elephants and the donkeys, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, having only two parties and really having parties in general doesn't make any sense. Each party does everything in their power to polarize a conversation so much that an argument is shut down before it even begins. Take for instance, uh, one of the primary platform issues in 2019 is clearly abortion. So when it comes to the abortion debate, you in America fall into one of two camps, pro-life, pro-choice. Now, why do we have these two particular standpoints in our country? Really, the conversation is whether or not you think that abortion should be legal or whether it's even a legality issue in the first place. So what it comes down to is conservatives, Republicans in America say that their side is pro-life. The reason that they paint it this way, however, is not because they value life, who wouldn't? I don't think anybody will stand in a, in a camp and say, oh, I completely oppose living. So the reason they paint it this way is that so that the other side of the argument the opposition, if you will, the Democratic side, automatically in their camp falls to the other side, anti-life. They think that Democratic or opposition to pro-life is automatically anti-life. Therefore, any argument that they have, G. This can also be said for the liberal side, pro-choice. Pro-choice implies the other side is anti-choice. They don't want anyone to have the choice or freedom to do whatever they want. And in America, this is a right that everybody holds very sacred and close to themselves. So, 
Both arguments are automatically fundamentally jaded and tainted before you even have a conversation. Both people are diametrically opposed, and doing so is completely artificial. I honestly think that legislating things from a moral standard in this way is what causes so much conflict to begin with. Now, of course, I will be speaking primarily about politics in America because that is where I live, and that is where I've grown up. Um, I do know a little bit about politics in other countries, and um, I'm happy to converse about them, but I'm, I'm honestly not as well read or versed in other countries' politics because America keeps my hands pretty full. The most important thing, in my opinion, about any country's government system is involvement. Involvement of its people, involvement in the process, and the only thing that really leads to involvement is education. I think the more educated a country is, and the more educated a populace is, the better their government will be, the better that their systems will end up being, and the better constructed their debates will ultimately become. I think that education leads to more involvement, and involvement is what makes change in countries possible. This is not just in America, but in any, any country. I think that political involvement and awareness are the utmost important, essential um, components to any functional government. Now let's talk about some of my political opinions and beliefs. Now, I will caveat this by saying that my beliefs and opinions are subject to change. And this doesn't just limit to politics, but to um, any kinds of beliefs about the universe and, and anything. I do remain a skeptic in as many things as I possibly can, and if you find me not being very skeptical on certain things, call me on it. I'd be happy to do more research, and I'm always happy to learn. Now I will say both conservatives and liberals in America uh, both have some great ideas. I think that both of them bring valid arguments to the table, and I do appreciate listening and learning from both sides. I like to try to formulate opinions about certain things regardless of political standpoints, and I find this quite difficult uh, for a number of reasons. The first of those reasons is that, as I said before, um, politics in America having a bipartisan government really makes every issue a diametrically opposed argument. So once you hold an opinion or belief about something, it's very difficult to find yourself swayed to the other side of the argument. And this is simply um, based on the construction of the argument to begin with. People will appeal to emotion rather than appeal to reason. And this is one of the messy, nasty parts about politics that uh, really prevent a lot of people from even actively participating. Now, I do hold three political opinions that I have held since I first came upon them. Now, this isn't to say that they could never possibly change, but I do not see the likelihood of them changing. The first of these political opinions is that I believe in fiscal conservatism. Now, I am not talking about um, having no taxes, and nobody pays anything, and the government doesn't function. What I am talking about is limiting the government's expenses, what the government can afford. So every single household in America, and I assume in just about every country, has to balance their own budget. You cannot spend more than you take in. I believe that holding debt over an entire populace of people is dangerous, and I also believe that it is something that can easily be avoided and saves us more money in the long run. The second of the political opinions that I hold very strongly is I do believe in democracy. I believe that uh, a individual in a population's voice should be heard when it comes to government of that individual. I believe that a democratic process is not just important because it allows an individual to um, shape their system of government and to let their voice be heard when it comes to um, how to be represented, but also because it allows for change over time. Societies change uh, and the needs of that society change. Uh, we don't certainly know now the things that are important to us, um, or we didn't know them 20 years ago or 50 years ago or 100 or 200 years ago. And these things need to be able to change. 
The third thing that I believe is that the government should represent primarily social systems, meaning that it should benefit society at large uh, in order to create a better society and a better living condition for everyone. Now the counterpoint to this um, social system that I believe the government should represent is that I do not believe the government should represent um, arbitrarily intervening in people's lives where it is genuinely unnecessary. I think that allowing the maximum number of freedoms possible is always the best outcome for everyone. I think there are certainly times where we should intervene. I think that um, legislation is certainly necessary for certain things, such as murder. Maybe that's probably not something we should allow. Just maybe. Now these three basic political standpoints also govern the other things that I follow. And um, unfortunately, I think that the majority of them are based uh, entirely off of necessity in order to support the first three. Uh, for example, I hold myself in the pro-choice camp uh, when it comes to the abortion debate. I don't do this because I think that um, abortion should have a legal status. I think that uh, whether or not somebody should have a safe and legal choice of what to do with their own body uh, really shouldn't be something we legislate into or out of law anyway. It should automatically happen. I think that the freedom of speech is one of the utmost um, protected freedoms in my opinion. And not just because I'm here posting all of my opinions on YouTube, but because I think that allowing the freedom of speech is the way that we share ideas, we share information, we have conversations, and we discuss things that are important to us in order to learn from each other and figure out what works best for everybody. I think that limiting freedom of speech in particular is not only arbitrary, I think that undersells it, I think that it is dangerous. I think that liberals do a really great job in representing equality amongst everyone in both word and deed. I think that, sorry, that's my cockatoo yelling at me right now. Thanks, Bert. Thanks, Kiwi. I think that somebody can dis disagree with you and present their argument logically and soundly, and they can have a conversation with you without being bigots. I think that deciding to arbitrarily take away somebody's human rights based on matters that are out of their control are clearly acts of bigotry and should be shut down. Just because somebody doesn't want to sell your product that supports a community that you do appreciate, that doesn't make them a bigot. It might be a business decision. It might not even have anything to do with whether or not they agree with the argument. It could be. Um, propelled by something entirely different and if you don't listen to somebody and you know take what they say greater than just face value then you're arbitrarily lim limiting the freedom of speech to begin with and hindering your own ideas. I think quite simply that education and healthcare are human rights. I don't think that these should be a monetized system that corporations can grow and gain in, you know, immense wealth based off of other people. I think that these are literally the, the bare bones of society. I think that we should have a right to educate ourselves to in order to be able to pursue our dreams. And I believe that we should be as healthy as possible and we should have health care that provides for that. Um, of course, these two things always go hand in hand. I think that education is always going to be the root of everything. I think that education is the root of involvement politically. I think that education is the root of skepticism and not believing just what people tell you at face value. I think that education leads to better argument, debates, and creation of issues that actually matter to people. I think that education is the underlying foundation for treating people with respect and giving them their basic human rights. Um, I think that education is obviously the foundation for everything.
Now, equal rights and basic human rights, I think, are very, very black and white for the most part. I think that, in general, everybody should have as many rights as they possibly can. I think that if you disagree with somebody else having their human rights, if you can lump it into a category of not being any of your business, then it shouldn't be legislated. I think that if you have a problem with other people's choices and what they do with their lives, then maybe you have a problem with yourself. Now, I say that partly joking, but in all seriousness, I think that if I as an atheist, for instance, decided that I found it disrespectful or I found it um, offensive to see somebody preaching on the street corner from the Bible or to tell me that they are praying for me. Not only would, really, I personally would feel that that is ignorant, but I also feel like it would be so arbitrary because I can simply say thank you and move on with my life. Um, I could simply ignore the person on the street corner. If I see a Bible in a bookstore, I'm not forced to buy it just because it exists. I've seen a couple posts on social media lately where people are signing a petition to outlaw the sale and use of rainbow imagery for the LGBTQIA plus community. I think that this is ridiculous, to say the least. Um, a group gets to choose its own symbology. If you hold that symbology in a different regard, then hold it in a different regard. It absolutely doesn't matter anything to you or to the rest of anyone else. Um, what a person does with their own body, their own choices, their own iconography, their own imagery is theirs. It is literally none of your business. If I choose to wear a rainbow pin on my shoulder, which maybe I will, um, that doesn't mean that I'm coming out and saying, hey guys, I belong to this community. It doesn't mean that I, hey guys, I support this community. Um, I do, by the way. But just because I'm wearing that, that iconography that another group uses doesn't automatically mean that I support that group. Why don't you just have a conversation with somebody and ask them instead of assuming? There's so much assumption going on. I, I actually had somebody call me professionally and complain about iconography that was being used to show support for an underserved group. And they were so upset because they very much disagreed with anybody supporting this group and they do not support the group and they thought that anyone supporting that group was an abomination and that they did not think that the company that I work for should be portraying that iconography because they found it to be offensive. I don't think that saying that because Bob can do whatever he wants to do in his personal life, that that means Ted has to do whatever Bob does. Um, it doesn't mean that I have to do whatever somebody else does just because I support their ability to do it themselves. I personally don't care. And I'm gonna leave it at that. I think that it's, it's so selfish for us to sit back and dictate what other people do. Let, let's look at it another way. I think that in the 1960s, America obviously went through a huge cultural shift and change. And we're not done going through that change. I'll get to that in a moment. But because of that change now, I feel like when issues regarding race in America in particular come up, people get very uncomfortable. I think that people get uncomfortable when they belong to a minority race because they are now put on the spot. 
or because they've been demeaned and they've had human rights removed from them in so many ways throughout their life that they are putting up mental barriers to some of these conversations or they have trigger reactions based on very real circumstances that have led them that far in their life. And I think that when it comes to talking about race in America, that the same thing can be true for people of the majority. I think that white people in particular get very nervous when it comes to discussing race. I think that this isn't necessarily um, white guilt or shaming or, or a lot of the excuses that people are giving nowadays, but because it genuinely makes people uncomfortable. This conversation makes people uncomfortable, and it should. It is not arbitrary that people have been denied their human rights. And we look back at that now with such unease, but it still continues to this day. The reason I bring this up at this point when I'm clearly talking about the LGBTQIA plus community is because if you were to insert the word black in place of the word gay or trans, in any situation, it would very likely make your stomach turn. For instance, if someone were to say, I think that the rainbow flag should be removed from store shelves because black people use it to represent themselves and that offends me. There would be riots in the streets. And quite frankly, there should be with the LGBTQIA plus community. When somebody says that you are different than me and therefore your existence offends me, and I think that something that you hold dear should be removed so that I am not offended. First of all, it's ignorant and bigoted. But second of all, it is disgusting. Now, if we go back to equal rights, when we're talking about particularly the African American community in America, I cannot stress this enough. We have so much more work to do as a society. If, if you as an individual see a Black Lives Matter poster, bumper sticker, or slogan written somewhere, and you think in your head that all lives matter, you're missing the point. I have very, very close ties for this community, and I feel very strongly. And I am getting a little bit emotional, and I apologize for that. And you can go down in the comments and call me an SJW all you want to, but this affects me because it affects my family. I will tell you this one thing. You can claim that we need a white history month and you can claim that all lives matter when white people are being killed because of the color of their skin. You can claim that we need these things when you've been forced into being treated as somebody else's property. You can claim these things when you get pulled over at 3 a.m. because you're driving to work, because your employer tells you you have to be there. And then you have to explain to your employer why you're late, because you got pulled over, because you're driving a car that looks like it belongs in a neighborhood of an ethnic minority. This is not arbitrary. This fight is nowhere near over, and it sickens me. So, sorry to get so deep for just a second. 
Uh, the last thing that I did want to talk about was um, two terms. And I put them in this political video for one reason, and one reason only. Um, because they're being used to separate people. Those terms are Social Justice Warrior, SJW, and Snowflake. I think that both of these terms are inspired by ignorance and hate. I think that because somebody supports a group that's different from them, passionately, I think there is a right and wrong way to do that. And I might do that in a wrong way. I might cause detriment to a community, but I will always admit it. And I will always correct it. There are people who will arbitrarily label everyone that disagrees with the community as bigots. And if you call them SJWs in order to silence their voice, then you're using that in a bigoted way. If you call somebody a snowflake because they belong to a different group than you, or because they are advocating for human rights, or because they are struggling to survive in a world that has not yet adapted to fit their circumstances, then you are doing that bigotedly. I do not think that calling somebody a special little snowflake in the way that it is typically used today is arbitrary and I do not believe that it is okay. I think that, sure, there are times to use it. In fact, I think that some of the younger generation have used it best to describe people like, I don't know, maybe the <coughs> Commander-in-Chief of the United States of America. But um, I think that, I think that using these terms, or any term, any term to dehumanize somebody or to discredit their opinion without actually providing a rational argument against it, or to even listen to their argument. If you just hear what they say and automatically get so triggered that you have to retaliate with any term, any, I don't care what the term is. It can be one of these two or it can be any term. When you react that way, all you're doing is invalidating your own argument and you are being hatred or you're being hateful and bigoted, period. And that is the end of that discussion. So, thoughts. I know this is a long video. Look, I want to start doing a couple more videos and telling you guys what I think, what I believe, and why. Um, I'd love to hear your feedback. I would love to see some comments down in the description. I've had a couple. I always respond to them. And I am always available to respond on Facebook, on Twitter, um, and of course here on YouTube. So if you want to PM me because you're afraid of seeing public backlash, look, I will tell you this. If you disagree with me, I'd rather have a conversation with you than shut you down because we cannot learn from each other if we don't talk. So don't be afraid to post something in the comments. Because if somebody else starts coming at you and saying, oh, well, you don't believe that gay people should be able to sell flags anymore, then you're a bigot, you're an idiot, and you need to get off the channel, then I'll shut them back too. Because I'd rather have a conversation with you. I'd rather see if your argument has any validity. And I'd rather tell you why I think it does or doesn't. Let's have a let's have a conversation. Let's be le let's be legitimate and real and learn from each other. Let's not keep repeating the same mistakes over and over again and expecting different results. That would be the definition of insanity. So, look, I've been a negative atheist and I've been on this soapbox for long enough today. I do plan on doing more videos like these in the future. So if you do like this one, go ahead and give it a like, subscribe, and uh, please hit me up for some more content. Thank you.